Hello. So I know it's been a long time since I've made uh, a video like this where I'm doing art or sharing a challenge or something, because uh, mostly it's been podcasts or some occasional product review. Uh, that's if I even make a video at all. Huh. Anyway, um, a while back we did a challenge, which you can still do. There are no rules uh, when it comes to starting, where we draw 100 heads in 10 days. We did this using a reference board that we made on Pinterest, and it's a it's a collection of various um, f photos of people, sculptures, uh, things that have good form, lighting, uh, etc. So it's a good way to learn, uh, a, a, let's say, a range of different things. But uh, a lot of people participated, which was really cool. And to this day, there's over 11,000 posts on Instagram that are tagged with this, which is Meds 100 Heads. And it's super cool to see that. And uh, I get tagged in a, a new post almost every day with someone starting the challenge. So we are going again. Uh, this time it'll be 50 heads in 10 days. This way there will be more time to spend on each drawing or painting. The Pinterest board link is in the description. Of course, it doesn't matter how you actually do it. There aren't really any rules. Try to do it in 10 days, but if you think, hey, this is a cool idea, but I wanna do it in 20 days so I have more time and I'm only gonna do 20 heads, again, that's fine too. The, the idea is that you're starting a goal and following through to it to the end. Anyway, uh, regarding the process that you're seeing in this video, I started by just kind of laying in basic shapes that represent the silhouette or like the loose forms of the reference. So I'll kind of squint my eyes or kind of blur them while I'm looking at the reference zoomed out and doing kind of a loose indication of the silhouette or the blob or the forms to sort of act as a sort of foundation that I can work on top of or sculpt on top of. And by sculpting, I mean kind of building up values or pushing in values, making them lighter or darker. The total time that it took to do all five heads like this was about two and a half hours. Not all at once, it was a kind of uh, collective um, 30 minutes here, 40 minutes there, that kind, of, that kind of thing. I might be posting the real-time version somewhere else. The colors I'm using are not really intended to be accurate to the reference. Instead, I'm using my own color palette of magentas, blues with a bit of orange here and there. But regarding using this kind of challenge to learn, because some might say, well, just doing a bunch of head drawings without a focus or um, intent of like, hey, I'm going to learn proportion, then you might be missing out on something. Fair enough. And there's a lot of ways to understand and study things. You could draw them, analyze, redraw them, reinterpret what you observed, and try to process things uh, thoroughly. And you could totally do that with this challenge. Um, that way you kind of focus on the shapes, proportions, values, form, uh, likeness, and, and there's so many things and parameters that you could focus on. Another way to go about it is to just will yourself to draw all of them in 10 days, and I guarantee you will have learned at least something, whether you're aware of it or not, even if that something is learning how to follow through with a goal. So uh, a couple of tips that I have in mind to share if you're doing this. When you are drawing from the reference, try to look for easy landmark shapes to start with. For example, if there's like a, a shadow shape under the nose that makes this kind of easy to draw triangle, well, just start with the shadow. Draw that shape and build outward from it. That way you can kind of have a um, anchor point to kind of keep ping-ponging your eyes back and forth to build up from it. Um, another example is if you see the negative shape between the jaw and the collarbone and it looks like a almost triangle, uh, not, not a triangle, a rectangle shape, then draw that first and then you build that you build on top of it. Um, another tip is to sort of sketch in like notes or marks. Uh, let's say you have like a loose blob for where the face is gonna be, but you put little marks to indicate, okay, the eyes are going to go here, the nose is gonna be here, and the corners of the mouth are there. Those uh, anchor points are really important landmarks so that um, you see the distances between them and where they're aligned with each other to develop likeness and believability. And by practicing that over and over again, you'll develop a sense of proportion for it. Uh, this is one of the main factors for trying to draw likeness. And also, once you know those parameters and you want to stylize things, you could push those further or bring them closer in. Uh, Disney does that a lot and a lot of animated things. Because if you look at the drawings that I'm doing here, I'm definitely pushing the proportions uh, in the studies. And, you know, I've done my time in the past to do to do like accurate and realistic drawings, which is a great way to learn and improve. 
but I also enjoyed the freedom of just pushing shapes, which is what I'm doing here. Because I can pretty much guarantee if you took the reference images and overlaid them on top of my drawings or my paintings, they won't be one-to-one -one accurate because I don't want them to be. Uh, you might be wondering how do you push those shapes for stylization? Um, I'd say, because like I get that question a lot, people really want the stylized look, that kind of liveliness that, you know, when you push things a certain way, it makes the character feel alive. But I'd say put in the mileage of understanding the basics first, like the proportions, lighting, form, shape design, uh, all the fundamentals that you need, that I'd say you need, uh, for anything like this. And once you've put in enough mileage for that, you'll understand them in such a way that you can do it accurately if you wanted to or realistically. And then once you could do that, you push and pull the parameters um, to be more or less emphasized. Uh, caricature artists do this all the time. So goals for me uh, with this whole challenge, um, well, <laughs> to start posting again more often, I'm posting here and there, but uh, I do want to uh, improve my ability to lay things out with a better sense of graphic design when it comes to like flow, rhythm, balance, just placing things is, is its own kind of challenge. Um, that's something that I'm okay at, but I want to work on and sort of let show up more in my work. I probably won't be painting all 50. I'll probably be drawing a lot of them because um, I think painting just takes too long for my schedule. Uh, so, you know, drawing them in my sketchbook, whether or not I record it, I don't know, uh, whether, whether or not I will. Um, but if I do draw them in my sketchbook with that in mind of wanting to make the layout really, I guess, appealing, um, it might take a, li a little bit of pre-planning, but that is the challenge for me. So, you know, I might have to figure out where the heads are going to go. Uh, if I place them here or there, will it create flow? Will there be too much tension? Is it too distracting to put things close to each other? That kind of thing. And I think that's um, something everyone should eventually also pay attention to. Because it's one thing to just be able to draw a pretty face, but if you start laying that out on a page and they all feel kind of static on there without any flow or direction or um, appeal, then it, it's you're just missing out on so that much more. Uh, a good example of a uh, good layout is art of books so art of disney art of dreamworks of those movies if you just flip through those books the way they lay out their sketches and blocks of text and, and paintings is really really nice it has a nice flow to it so it's like you're going through an experience rather than just hey here's the powerpoint presentation of my artwork anyway that's uh pretty much all i have to say about the 50 heads challenge for now uh and definitely thank you to anyone who participated in the previous one I hope you do this one as well. There's like a lot of, you know, big names too doing it, which is really cool to see. Some YouTubers, I think uh, Minnie Smalls was doing it. Um, she did a, a really nice, well done, high quality video with uh, really nice editing on her channel. Um, so that was pretty great to see. Um, but anyway, uh, an update on other things. Uh, I have been on a weekly podcast and mentorship under Pete Morbacher and Sam Flegel, and it's been going great. Uh, basically, they are helping me with my, uh, I guess, direction in the art that I'm doing, and it's about week seven, and it's been quite a, a really good, rewarding experience, and we'll soon be doing a one-time only print run of the paintings that I did, and the paintings are all based on uh, I guess the inner demons that I had based on my anxieties and how I overcame them. So if you want to see that process, by the way, you could check out their um, YouTube channel and watch the One Fantastic Week podcast. That's what it's called, One Fantastic Week. So if you want to see the recorded ones of them helping me, there's about seven of them already. And just go on their channel and find that playlist. Or you could just kind of search my name one uh, with one, one Fantastic Week. And they also have a lot of other artists that they mentored and are also out there doing great things. So keep your eye out for that and thanks for watching and keep drawing. If you want to subscribe to this channel, blah, 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 blah.